Time to break out the Boone's Farm, Newports, and Hardee's, or whatever. The High Point Yeet Cannon 9 is finally here. So why do I say finally? Well, sit back, taking a tale of some hobo gun lore. Almost five years ago, 2019 SHOT Show, TFB-TV was fortunate enough to get an exclusive behind-the-scenes video on High Point's next-generation 9mm pistol. High Point's been making the inexpensive but utterly reliable High Point C9 for decades, but High Point operators wanted modern conveniences such as enhanced ergonomics, actual functioning slide serrations, optics mounting capability, threaded barrels, and one of those newfangled double stack magazines for increased capacity. High Point set out to do this with this next generation of budget 9mm. That's essentially their flagship firearm. This is something High Point needed to approach very carefully because when you revamp a signature product, it better be done correctly. After all the initial hype, High Point hosted a naming competition for this new pistol and they absolutely got Bodie McBoat faced with the winning name. I was pulling for PS9, or Problem Solver 9, but the victor was even more absurd than that, so this pistol is going to be known as the YC9 or Yeet Cannon 9. The development process for a simple, inexpensive, straightforward blowback 9mm pistol ended up taking more time than R&D for an HK assault rifle. Years passed. Developing the Yeet Cannon took so long that High Point wisely rolled out many of the more desirable and easily integrated updates to other pistols, including their 10 mil, their 40, and their 45 ACP versions of the High Point pistol. Side note, I reviewed the 10 millimeter version, the JXP-10, with all the new upgrades. I consider that to be High Point's best pistol since it works well and has competitive capacity with other 10 mils. So High PZ integrates nearly all the improvements of the Yeet Cannon, such as forward slide serrations, enhanced grip checkering, threaded barrel, the ability to mount optics to several of its other pistols. The only thing they hold off on is double stack magazines. So it takes long enough, the High Point Yeet Cannon 9's here. Let's talk about the specs and the features before we get into the review, because we've got about a thousand rounds through this gun already. This brick weighs 34 ounces, which I think is 10 ounces heavier than a Glock 19. The main improvement here, double stack magazine that ups the capacity by two to 10 rounds. And as you can see here, it adds virtually no thickness to the gun. The YC9 has actual slide serrations now that are functional and good looking and a threaded barrel as an option if you wanna use a suppressor. You've got Picatinny rail for mounting a light. High Point is also machining the slides to work with optics via your choice of an RMR footprint plate or in the most High Point move ever, a piece of Picatinny rail. Will someone please mount an EOTech, an X300B, and a suppressor on one of these and let it rip? Grip texture's been upgraded. There's also a grip safety now. All this in the YC9 is barely a couple of ounces heavier than the original C9, and it looks almost identical, dimensionally speaking. Why didn't they do this earlier? But for your big decision, it'll either come in a sanitized version or a version with Yeet Cannon emblazoned on the side. If you need the block to know, you mean business. We were elated to get a first copy of the YC9 at the range. Function is basically indistinguishable from the C9 in terms of manual of arms, trigger, which is about, I just measured it, like seven and a half, eight pounds. Rule number one, always look cool. Frankly, the YC9 is a lot like its older brother, the C9, in that it's so ugly that it's beautiful. Like the High Point C9 series is the gas station blue blockers of handguns. They've made this pistol about as ergonomic as possible for being a massive brick of a firearm. And that's not to say it's good ergonomically. I'm just saying it's as good as it can be. The sights are better. You've got these orange and yellow contrast sights. You can mount an optic, you get two extra rounds, but at what cost? Did High Point fly too close to the sun, modifying its bread and butter problem solver, all for the sake of adding an additional couple rounds of nine millimeter? Unfortunately, in my experience, I think so. Now, we were using a suppressor with a Nielsen device, which the high point probably doesn't need because it uses a fixed barrel. I feel like I got a little bit more blowback in my face from the YC9 and suppressor than I'm used to, 
I'm wondering if that had anything to do with the fact that this is a straight blowback gun with no true delay device, but maybe not. I get a malfunction right away. Super, super, super crushing. We were also using a 150 grain Federal Syntec, kind of a heavy round using a polymer jacket. So I didn't think much of it. Yep, there it is again. Oh man, high point. Until it started happening with 115 and 124 and 147 grain conventional rounds with or without a suppressor. And we're not talking about a, a whole bunch of malfunctions here, but enough to be annoying and unreliable, like one round every few magazines. All right, uh, failure to feed. Um, this is mag number three, one of the new mags. Now here's a comment I'm going to make for the benefit of the audience and manufacturers out there. If you send me a pre-production gun, there are issues with it, it's no problem. We can 100% work them out, you and I, and I probably won't even mention the issues in the video if the problems are fixed by the time production rolls around. So I call High Point and I let them know about my issue. They think it could be magazine related, which is the obvious place to start. So they send me an envelope that has a shitload of magazines in it. And we number all the mags just so we can be sure. Doesn't matter which magazine, which ammo type, suppressed, unsuppressed, whatever. We had assorted malfunctions. Um. This one's what we had originally at the last range session, uh, where the round just kind of goes nose up. Most of them involve the incoming round going tip up and not feeding. So I call High Point again, they check through the guns, and they find that there are actually a number of copies that were manufactured out of spec. Mine was probably one of them because it was a super early copy. They send me another copy of the gun. I've still got my five or six magazines from the first pistol. More of the same. Oh, one of the new mags. Uh-oh. I would say that the third range session that we had this new gun on, we had exactly one malfunction every box because we had four failures and four boxes of ammo. All said and done, we ran about a thousand rounds through two pistols, neither of them I would call reliable. Is it possible that I just happened to receive two copies that were out of spec? God, I hope so. I want High Point to succeed here. If you guys remember, my first High Point video ever was probably six or seven years ago when I was trying to get into the YouTube Cool Guy Club, and I decided the easiest way to do that, just like being in prison, you beat up an easy target. The High Point 380 I bought used for 100 bucks, couldn't get it to malfunction. It ran perfectly, and it changed my perspective on this manufacturer. Now, I unironically own maybe a half dozen problem solvers myself since then. I've never, ever, 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 ever received an unreliable High Point until today. I personally love the people that work at High Point. I've developed a respect for their product. They manufacture something economical, something reliable, which is why I'm disappointed with the Canon 9, at least the copies I got. That's always been the tagline for me whenever I do these reviews. Is it kind of crappy? Yeah, but it's cheap, it's reliable, it's good to go. Is the capacity, the extra two rounds of 9mm, worth the squeeze? I mean, who is High Point competing with? You guys own the block on cheap and reliable handguns. God, that's, that's funny. That's actually pretty good accuracy for a gun this cheap. Smooth shooting, too, I, I gotta say. I mean, there's a whole mag semi-rapid fire in, like, two inches, seven yards. Not, like, the best, but it's still pretty good. Especially when you consider the trigger on this thing. Who are you trying to compete with? You went from an 8-round brick gun to a 10-round brick gun. But assuming that the YC9 did work as intended and was as reliable as the C9, then what is it? Like, look out, Glock 19, here comes the Yeet Cannon? Are there people out there who weren't going to buy a high point with 8 rounds, but they will buy one now because it's got 10 rounds? I guess the point, high point, I'm driving at is that you can just implement all of the Yeet Cannon features like you've done with the 40, the 45, and the 10 mil. Keep the same magazine from the C9. Don't 
with the formula. Don't try to make new Coke. Don't try to make Crystal Pepsi. Or if you do, make damn sure it works great. More bullets is always better, but not at the cost of reliability. Anyways, I'm sure several videos are going to release this week, maybe even today, because today is the launch day about this gun. I hope mine's the only one with reliability issues, because I'm always pulling for my boys from Ohio. Stay tuned because I want to make an update about this gun when surely I get back on here on TFB TV and I tell you that the new version that I got works stupendously and it's the best budget gun ever made. But until then, guys, thanks a ton for watching. Thank you to Ventura Munitions who sent all the ammo that we used in this video. Thank you to our sponsor, Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. If you want to win one of six $250 gift certificates that we give away to Top Gun Supply every single month, check the link in the description. But thanks as usual for watching and take care.